Hello, David Zritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. I am so excited because we have somebody here that we're going to be able to fully explore. But you, as the audience, probably know her as Peaceful Fountains of Desire from Die Another Day. However, she's so much more than that. She is an actress, TV host, packing expert, travel writer, award-winning digital producer, social entrepreneur, explorer, and I'm going to add an animal activist. That's a mouthful. So Rachel Grant, welcome to the show. Hello, David. Nice to meet you. Finally. <laughs> I know it seems like it's, it's we've been like two ships passing in the night. No, it's we, we've just been like missing each other. And we've been arranging this for about two months. So it, it's, more. It's, it's true. But I, we, we have literally you captive right now. We could see the beautiful background and you're not on an know, island somewhere. So this is actually, am I get, can I really ruin it? Oh, yeah. Look. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is one of these things, right? It's so funny. I bought this in Ikea years and years ago and it's like traveled all around the world. I really don't know why I've brought it around the world with me. Oh, does it still oh. look good? And for some reason <laughs> I still have it and I now use it as a backdrop for Zoom meetings. It's one of my choices, but I figured it could be um, something like um, from a Bond movie, like from, um, what was the one with, uh, oh gosh, I'm like my memory with Bond films. Oh, the man with the, the man with the golden oh, gun. Yes. It was actually the first Bond movie I ever saw. And as a child, you remember things like that because, please forgive me here, because I'm, you, you know, when you're like seven years old and your dad's watching James Bond movies and you're watching the beginning, it's at the beginning of the film, I think. Um, what's his name? Oh, Scaramanga. Scaramanga. Oh, Scaramonga. Oh my Scaramonga. God, Scaramucci, That's okay. I said. I'm here to Scaramonga. help. Oh my I'm God, Scaramucci. Help. You know where I got that from. He has three nipples. And I remember my dad saying, oh yeah, he's got three nipples. My dad's a doctor, so I know there's a term for it. So we use that term. I can't remember what it is. But ever since then, I don't know, I've always remembered that scene. That's like, <laughs> that was the first Bond movie I ever saw. Um, so anyway, I figured this could be something from a Bond movie. It could be from any Bond movie, actually. Sorry. So your, your dad was a huge fan. You were brought up with Bond I think movies. he was, yes. And now he, he, he is and he was. I know because we had Bond movies in the background all the time. And living in England, every Sunday or Saturday afternoon, they would play them. And they're so popular. And I just think as a child, um, when it's going on in the background, it's, I mean, it's not made for children, but as a child, it's extremely attractive. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's action, it's, um, it's funny. And then they have all these larger than life characters, you know, they had, I remember, you know, so as a child, you remember like the character Jaws mm -hmm. and uh, Grace Jones, she was so statuesque and this, you know, these characters are larger than life. And then the man with the glass eye and all, all these things, they're like comic book characters. So I love the Bond movies growing up. And one movie actually that stood out to me growing up was like Moonraker and, and people laugh at it. But as a child, that's like so much fun, I think. And um, what was the movie where, oh yeah, Jaws, that having this fight scene on, oh gosh, all these memories flooding back, on this cable car. Oh yeah, that was remember. Moonraker. That's, huh? Is that Moonraker? It's still Moonraker, yeah. yeah. It is Moonraker. And he was in Moonraker and he was in The Spy Who Loved Me, was it? That's right, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then... You're like a genuine Bond fan. I'm really impressed. Like, I know, like I was, like I was. Like I, for example, growing up, like something that the James Bond movies did, they showed women of different nationalities a lot. And I think that they were one of the first to do that. And people think people forget that. Obviously people say, oh, it's James Bond and he's a male chauvinist, blah, 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 and this and that. But you know, growing up for a woman, I looked up to these women that were strong. They, these women were powerful. They were Asian, they were black, they were Russian, they were white, all sorts of different colors and things. So for me being half Asian, half Filipino and growing up, first generation of half asian growing up in britain this was this was interesting to me and i loved yeah. it hey it might even be one of the reasons why i pursued a career in tv and film because i really there was something about the bond movie so colorful it had everything it like push, pushed all the right buttons you know i was a little bit of a tomboy when i was little i loved to climb trees i had guns you know like little plastic guns and things like that and yeah it was 
Yeah, I they were so it. nice to have on. For some reason, they're, they're child friendly, I think. I don't know, maybe I'll watch them back and think not. But I remember them to always be so likable and so enjoyable when I was a child. As I said, these characters are larger than life and they're, they're big comic book characters. They were wonderful. They yeah. are. And, and the Roger Moore movies especially were so good for children because they're a little bit campier. They're a little bit yes, nonsensical yes. So and it, you can have fun with it. Exactly, that comedy. That comedy worked and you know i always also remember because my father told me this so i was brought up on musicals mm -hmm. and i loved also the movie chitty chitty bang bang oh, Did, uh, yes. so what do you know about that that was written that was written by ian fleming that's right the book was written by ian fleming and is it right was that the last book he ever wrote i have a feeling it might have been it, it may have been. I know it was kind of co-authored, but it could have been. I'm sure somebody will correct me on my... I think, I think it chat. was. And if I remember, because my father is very dear friends with a, very, with a family that was very close to Ian Fleming, and still is close to the Fleming family. So I've heard little bits, and it's weird that my father has this connection, and I've heard little bits and pieces. So I know that, because he had a chart... He had chill. He had a child. Did he have one child? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I might be getting things wrong. But I know that he always wanted to write a book. He finally wrote it at the end of his life, I think, and it was for children. So that's why I think it might be his last book. But I know there's probably Bond fans yeah. out there. No, it wasn't. <laughs> well, it's amazing. <laughs> too, I'm not like I'm not like a nerd with all this, but I know I have bits of information. Um, yes, Ian. Fleming. I love it. How how much of this? I mean, we. I'm dying to find out the whole journey you had, because you you had done acting and modeling martial arts even yes. before casting. So yes. how, did the, how did this all kind of dovetail into you being cast finally? So I was raised in performing arts and theater. I come from a trio of um, performing artists, my sisters. I'm the middle of three sisters. So we were always on stage. We were always dancing, singing, acting. We were always like winning awards and going to competitions, you know, that sort of thing. Um, we all loved it. We loved it so much. And then eventually I moved to London from Nottingham because I'm from Nottingham and my mother still lives there. And um, we went to performing arts college. And then from there on, I was auditioning. I think my first role was playing Princess Jasmine understudying her in pantomime when I was 18 in Oxford and then you know, we did lots of other things. I was very, always very successful with commercials. Like my look was good for commercials in England. Um, and then when it came to acting roles, I always had a harder time because I'm half Asian, I'm half Filipino. So the roles that were out there were always for, they're, they're very specific, you know, always um, you have to be Caucasian, you have to be Chinese, you have to be Filipino, you have to look like, you have to look the part. So trying to look the part was what I was always trying to do so mm. it was always a problem but for other things it worked out well like for commercials and always and also if like there was like an ambiguous role and it didn't matter what the person looked like which actually is quite rare because there's always background stories so they're very specific to where these characters are from and what they look like then it would be okay so as i was saying would be auditioning for various things i got nice roles and tv shows in england like emmerdale and casualty and you know parts here and there and um, a couple of movies and what have you um and then one day my agency at the time who were called oriental casting which is quite unusual wow. um i know <laughs> well in england i don't know now if it's like a thing not to call people oriental but i know in the states you're not meant to say that obviously right but there was an agency they don't exist anymore but they actually got me the james bond movie they said to me they called me up one day it was a um i've got i've got this down it was a wednesday and they said to me you've got an audition tomorrow for a james bond movie and i was like oh <gasps> okay great what's the role and they said it's to play a chinese character and i'm like oh okay i'm not chinese i'm half filipino and my mum's not even full filipino so i said great i'll love to go they gave me the address and it was eon productions on piccadilly i don't know if you know all these things i'm sure yeah, you do. yeah 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 um so i obviously wanted to go there and see the place interestingly i should mention this I had actually auditioned for Tomorrow Never Dies oh. when I was a teenager. Debbie Milk Williams, who is the casting director, mm -hmm. I had like a general casting for 
for the role. And it, they didn't make me read any lines, but they were looking at girls. But I remember going in and I don't know what age I was. I'm guessing 18 and um, went in and that was it. She was very nice. I was so excited to be auditioning for a Bond movie. I kind of knew that maybe I wouldn't get it. I didn't. But um, so I auditioned and then forgot all about it. So I think she might have remembered me. I don't know. I think she said that because I asked her, oh, wow. you know, they keep like files and a list of like different actresses and actors, what have you. So when I went in for this Chinese role, I knew it would be very hard for me to get. So I gave it my best shots. Yeah. I actually really thought I would, would not get it. And it wasn't going in with a bad attitude. I don't have that kind of attitude. But I did. Um, I did go out my way and I bought a Chinese dress, a nice okay. little one, which I still have to this day. And I actually did want to wear it for you today because I wanted to show that I can still get into it. But if I might add, I know, I am, I, you know, I just had a baby four and a half months ago and I'm I breastfeeding know. at the moment. Congratulations. So, thank you. That's great. She's so adorable too. She's so the dress, sweet. When I squeezed on the dress today, I was like, I should have brought it down actually. I was like, oh, I forgot about that bit. The top bit wasn't working so well. So next time I can No worries. <laughs> but I, it's amazing. I still have this dress and I love it because it's like my lucky dress. So-, um, so Were wore, you surrounded by multiple people? Is there hardly oh, anybody so in the room? Interesting. So I wore this Chinese dress. I brought my nunchuckers. These are the nunchuckers that I brought into the audition. I still have them because I still swing them around. Because I thought, how can I stand out? How can I be like a Bond girl? How can I be larger than life? And I'd obviously been so inspired by the James Bond characters watching them. And I knew that anything kind of goes, you know, they can always rewrite scenes and what have you. So I brought my nunchuckers along and I, when I walked in, oh, when I walked in, there's like this little, what do we, like a little porch area. And right sat there was the most beautiful, girl she was Korean and I said oh hi you know I love to talk to people in when I, in these auditions and sometimes they're friendly and sometimes they're not I said oh are you here for James Bond casting and she was like oh yes and then she actually told me she was Korean and she'd actually been cast in a role and they had changed the script and she was a bit disappointed and her scene was now taken out and they'd rewritten the scene, not with a Korean, for a Korean girl, but for a Chinese actress, but they were re-auditioning her. And she said, she obviously was hoping that they'd still book her on the job. And so when she told me that, I felt really bad for her. And I was like, oh, oh. and then I, I actually wanted her to get it. And I actually thought, oh, they'll probably get her anyway, because if she's been booked for it already, then that's really disappointing. So I thought she might get the role. Anyway, she goes in and then after that I go in and um, oh, and they don't give you the script until you get there because they don't want it to come out or anything, wow. um, you know, and then as soon as you leave, they've got their eyes like peeled on you and they're like, that's the script. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the piece of paper, right? So, so yeah, so they give you a script as soon as you get there. So you really don't have time to learn it. And then, um, yeah, and then I just walked in. There was nobody there other than Debbie McWilliams in this beautiful car, in this beautiful room. And then there was this chandelier hanging down and I remember looking at it and um, she was um, setting up some lighting or moving it around. And I said to her, oh, I do martial arts. And I thought martial arts and Bond girls, they go really well. I wonder if I can do a little martial art demo. So she said, sure, of course. So I bring out my nunchuckers and I, in this little dress, I start kicking my legs up twirling my nunchuckers around and I just remember thinking oh crap it, what if it hits the chandelier because the chandelier was like and I'm like swinging these around I was doing nunchuckers through the legs like I was doing the most amazing nunchucker demo and she just looks at me and goes oh my gosh we have to get this on camera this is fantastic and I was like oh great so she films me doing this nunchucker demo and then and then I do my lines and she asks me a few questions and that was it Anyway, that was the Thursday. By Saturday, I remember where I was. I was in um, the mini, the new mini was just being launched. Mm. And I was in the mini showroom somewhere in London, in some mini showroom. And I get a call from my agent and she says, they want you for the Bond movie. And I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. God. <laughs> I know, it was like really exciting. And I just was like, oh. and then I just remember thinking, oh no, that, um, because I'm quite sensitive. I was like, oh no, that poor Korean actress. Oh, she didn't. didn't. You are so sweet. I did. I actually felt really bad for her yeah. because you know I know how hard it is to get roles. Um, it really is. You know, and you can go for so many, and 
you can be so ripe for a role in so many ways, but they're just not going to pick you for whatever reason. And hey, they picked me for to play a Chinese person. But in some ways they can get away with it because it's James Bond and he's British and there's, you know, it's Hong Kong and Brit Hong Kong's British. So I could easily be half Chinese. Sure. So it could be the case. So um, did they tell you right away what you're going to be doing and what the role is? Um, so I'm so when I got the script at the audition, there were, you know, I, I had the script, they told me you're a masseuse and blah, but then on the day they told me there was all this back information. Mm. Um, you know, obviously there's like she's part of Chinese intelligence and blah blah blah. And then I didn't know there was like a man, I didn't know there was a man behind the mirror, for example, and that they were going to and I didn't know that was part of the scene and all that. And um, oh, one thing I do remember about this script, about this, um, it said at the beginning that when Peaceful answers the door, he's just come out of the shower and he's got a towel wrapped around his waist and he's topless. And I just remember thinking, oh my God, I don't know why. But I remember, my mom was, um, my mom was a fan of, Oh, what movie, what was it? Oh, Remington Steel. Oh yeah. That yeah. was another thing that we always had on in the background growing up as a child. My mum loved Remington Steele. He, she loved Pierce Brosnan. Oh, she really did. So <laughs> I remember thinking, oh no, I've got this Remington Steele man going to be topless, answering the door. And, he, and anyway, come the day, um, <laughs> it wasn't the case. He wasn't topless. And you know, I quite liked that. You know, I quite yeah. liked that he wasn't. Because it was classic Bond, you know, in his shirt. I don't think, he, he didn't have a tie on, you know, he looked, yeah, he was not cleanly shaven. That was the first time we see him like that yeah. in the movie, if I remember. So he looked good and he just looked like James Bond. Yeah. of desire, the masseuse. I come with compliments of the manager. I'm sure you do. So can I tell you something? I have yeah. I have a confession to make. So for this interview today, I yeah. did dress up in the sense that this is the Die Another Day shirt. Oh my God. This is the Die Another Day Omega. Oh, that's so nice. The cufflinks yes, he was wearing. that's right. In that, the film, I, just I for this occasion. That's so nice. Can I see it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they are so nice. They're I done do remember him, yeah. those because you can see them in the photo. I do these signings and you can see that in the photo. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. That's a really nice shirt. It's a bit see-through. I didn't realize that. Is yeah, it? it's um. this particular one is his tuxedo shirt. He was wearing a Brioni in yours. This is a Turnbull and Asser. So this Ooh. is actually this is actually Voile, which is nearly see-through. Oh, that's very interesting. But that's I figure you can't see my nipples. Can I, can I see it a bit more? Oh, no. Yeah. I was going to say, oh, it's very nice. Oh, it's actually really nice. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to look semi the part, but I. Oh, no, I'm so I, sorry. I should have worn my Chinese. Dress. No, 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 no. I could Go have get had changed. it open in the back and I would never have told you. I, oh, by the I, way, I, I was thinking of doing something. Like that. I was thinking, you know, because I can't close it at the back because I said I was breastfeeding. So my shape up there is a little different. I was thinking I could just leave it open at the back and no one will know. And the, but then knowing me, I might turn around like grabbing the. Uh, <laughs> anyway. I'm I'm hilarious sometimes. I'm actually very funny, like I'm whatever, I'm anything goes. Oh my gosh, I love it. Well, I, and I want to hear about the filming because I, I want to tell you something. Um, nobody knows that I'm doing this. This is going to be a wonderful surprise for my audience and the Bond community. They will adore this because your scene, without exaggeration, is arguably everybody's favorite scene from that movie because it, and I'll explain, Everybody loves Bond lifestyle moments. Seeing Bond ah. just relaxed, shaving, yes. the, the Bollinger yeah. with the drips coming yes. down, the shirts on the table. And then there's this explosive moment with you being kind of this, you know, coattail. Right. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And you're, you're a part of that history. That's amazing. Do you know that's amazing you say that because, I mean, I hope obviously you're not over exaggerating, but. I I remember when the Bond movie came out, the reviews were very mixed, but I remember reading one review and it was for, I can't remember the publication, but it was a good publication and it might still be online somewhere, that said, the movie goes, after the masseuse, 
After Peaceful comes out in the masseuse, the scene is done. The movie slowly goes downhill. And the guy actually says, the writer said, up until then, and with that masseuse scene, that is classic Bond. I remember him saying that. He's cleanly shaven. He said something about it. And the girl at the door, that until then, he said that the movie was is fantastic. Up until then, I mean, obviously this is his opinion, and then it slowly goes downhill. I actually happen to like the movie. I like it when it gets all fun and funky. Um, <laughs> um, but um, I remember that, and I remember feeling actually really good that he mentioned me. I was like, wow, you know, there's no such thing as small roles. I actually remember thinking, he's saying this about the scene. It wasn't just me, it wasn't me, sorry, but I was involved in what he was um, talking about. And, Absolutely. Um, you know, and it was very, books. it was very Fleming too. the whole scene. And what, yeah, what people love about it me, is said to me that, oh, Ian Fleming would have loved that. Yeah. 100%. And, and hand on heart people, um, you know, we could talk about the movie a little bit more, but people will often stop watching it right before he goes to Cuba, because that scene where he walks in his pajamas, and he strolls through the lobby, and he yes. has that connection there. Yes. And then that yes. room scene is so very Pierce Brosnan, and it's so very Bond too. Right. Yes, I see now. I understand now what understand now why people say that. And it's funny because when I go about with my mother sometimes, and she's very proud, that, you know, of her girls. And sometimes she, people will ask um, things about this, and she might say, "Oh, my daughter Rachel was in a James Bond film." And weirdly enough, whenever she mentions the scene. Every single person she mentions it to that seen them remembers it. It surprises me. And I, I really don't know why. It's weird. We were on a plane going somewhere once and the, um, the stewards, my mum mentioned it to him. Um, and he was like, oh my gosh, yes, I remember. And you had a gun on your thigh. And I was like, how do people remember these things? That's hard to forget that part. <laughs> I know. And the gun, what happened to the gun? Did you hear about that? Uh, not only did I hear about it, um, the gentleman who owned the gun, who now has part of it back, as you know, is my good friend. And yeah, those were unfortunately, all of his guns were stolen. The llama that you had on your, your thigh too. Did he, I know, did he ever um, recover any of the other guns? Just, just that one and I think another, but the llama that was on your thigh is in very poor condition. I, know, I think terrible. the grips were missing. Yeah, it's rusted. Can he like do it up and make it look nice? I'm sure he will. He was so proud to have that. I feel so... I felt actually quite bad about it. I know it's just a gun, but but still, I I hear you know I'm a collector of movie props and bits and pieces, so I oh. not nothing major. I've probably stopped, um, but anything like for example, um, I did ask if I could keep the Chinese dress did they that say I no wore, way? and I knew it wouldn't be possible. In fact, I had three dresses, you oh. know, but. Um, and you know, I tried them all on on the day and walked on set, and then they just picked the best one that. You know, there was um, one that was like blue, and then there was obviously the pink one, fuchsia, and, um, and, then, and then there was another one. I almost forget the color, but I think it was like a gray color. But anyway, they went with the they went with that color, the pink one. And um, I asked if I could keep it. They said no. They said I could keep my tights, so I did. I have mm. them somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> they're worth big money. Big big money. <laughs> I know. I couldn't keep the shoes. Because quite often when you work on these things, they will let you keep them. And I know yes. on, in a James Bond movie they won't. Um, and obviously the gun, I, well, I had three guns. There were three choices mm. of guns too. There was a few. So it's amazing. You know, the quality of working on a James Bond film, I just want to tell Bond fans out there that it is everything you would expect it to be and so much more. Oh, oh. like I've worked on some amazing sets, like, top-notch sets and with great directors and producers. I've worked, it wasn't my first time to work at Pinewood Studios, actually. I'd actually mm. worked with um, Lindy Fleming, not Lindy Fleming, what am I talking about? Lindy Hemming. Lindy Hemming, yeah. The costume you know designer. Is? Yeah. Yes. So she was also the costume design, designer on um, Tomb Raider with Angelina Jolie. Mm -hmm. It just so happens that I actually body doubled for Angelina Jolie on Tomb Raider 1. So I'd worked with her before. I only worked on Tomb Raider for 10 days and they wanted me to do the whole thing. And I just applied to Cambodia and everything. Luckily for me, and I would have loved the opportunity, but you know, I, I'm an actor. So being a body double, I was doing it more for the experience, mm. but I got another job. I got another TV job actually working for 
um, the Sci-Fi Channel in England. So I luckily had another job, so I had to drop that job. But Lindy Hemming, I worked with um, quite closely for 10 days. So when I got cast on the James Bond movie, when I walked in, she knew exactly who I was and she went, oh. darling, you've gone from body double to Bond girl. And I was oh. like, yay! That is oh, that amazing. So funny. I know, there, it was funny. That... Were... Oh, go ahead, sorry. No, 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 no. By the way, can I ask you, I keep looking at, I keep looking at you down here and then I look up at the camera, which is better for me to look at? Oh, you can look at the camera, yeah. Oh, I can, but I want it's to look to you. at you too. I want to look at your beautiful face. Oh, then do however you want to look. It's all good. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm doing it for, because usually I'm told to look at the camera, the lens, but I don't know. I can look at you. You can look at me. Right. You won't okay, tell I the difference. What's your paintings at the back? Now I'm noticing things. So this is actually an artist that did a series of paintings of some of the, um, the Bond outfits that I actually wear. So oh, he works God. in this really interesting channel. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll send you some pictures of my office. It's- Oh, you, yeah, I keep forgetting. Of course, you were like a real, real Bond fan. That's amazing. It's, that's it's got so a crazy fun. collection, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so nice to be into that. Isn't it so nice? It is. And it's a great group of people and- Oh, oh. I love the people behind the Bond, the Bond fan people. That's yeah. so nice. And whenever I've had questions to ask to these Bond fans or follow, do you, do you call them Bond fans? Or is that sure. weird? Yeah, no, it's fine. They're always so like they get the feedback, like some the feedback that they give. Like somebody, um, somebody asked me not too long ago, um, how do I feel about James Bond being a woman, and if I thought it would happen, and I just was like, hmm. And so I asked a couple of Bond hardcore Bond fans, and I got there was very good in the answers I got, and I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, like, you know, these are nope. things I sometimes ask questions to various people. Oh my gosh. So I have to ask because yeah. I do want to hear like when you met Pierce Brosnan, were you, were you yeah, there no, for you have one to day? Stop me I talk too much. No. Oh my gosh. I, you cannot. And this is another thing about Bond fans. You cannot get into too much detail. Oh, we right. love the details. So was it one day, two days? Three days, three days for that. No. I know. How lucky is that? Three days. And this is why I'm telling you that it's so amazing working on a Bond movie because everything is just so perfect. I'm telling you that room, the room that we worked in, that suite, is in the 007 stage, and it is huge. Now, usually when you're on a film set, you see one side of the room and it will look great, but the other side will look like crap. Not on a James Bond movie. We're talking about an amazing set that really is like a five-star hotel in Hong Kong. And I remember walking around the room, like I'm really chatty on set. Like I love to like talk to everybody. I was talking to the props guy. He was going around the room, like polishing ornaments that were just amazing mm. in little corners of the room that we don't even see on set. I mean, maybe we get little glimpses here and there, but there were so many things and the detail in one little ornament that sits in a corner so far away that you'll never even see or on a shelf and the detail and the thought that goes into it, every single item, like these are top notch people. And I just was like, the quality is amazing so nice and I was looking at like the champagne and all the detail and the linen and the bed and everything and and then the mirror that they break oh, do you remember yeah. that yeah absolutely oh, that's like so, that was so great so you think that they just give it one shot usually it's like okay guys we got one take to do this we've got one mirror but no this is a James Bond film so they can do it as many times they can so it's really funny when they bring along this mirror that they have to be so careful with because it can break so easily because it's made of like sugar and then every time it broke then they have to reset it they pick up every single scrap and oh shard gosh. and then they bring along the other mirror and place it up so perfect everything is just I can't tell you it's just to work like as an actor to work in quality like that is, you have to understand this is why actors get spoiled, these big stars, you know? It's true because everything is so perfect. I mean, you look so perfect. Anything that goes out of place and eyelash falls, got 10 people running to pick it up, <laughs> anything <laughs> like that. So it's, it's really wonderful. It really is a wonderful, a wonderful quality. Absolutely, hands down, amazing. I just wanna say how, Super impressed I was. Everything about it. Mm. Can't oh. It. <laughs> oh, I love that you you still love it though. It's amazing. And how how 
I mean, it looked like you were very physical in this role too with, with Brosnan. Was that something you had to practice? I mean, he's literally grabbing you. That's funny you say that. Now, it, it was interesting because we had to do it quite a few times. And I remember the following day, I had like a mini handprint on my wrist. Oh. Isn't that funny? There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I did. I had like a mini like print on my wrist. Like it was a little... Um, yeah, I mean, that's fine. I, by the way, I bruise very easily. I've always been like that. Okay. I can like knock my arm like this and they'll be like, oh, look at that. So yeah, so um, yeah, it was a little physical. It was so much fun. Um, I could talk in more detail about it. Please. Um, I mean, so it's actually so funny because I actually had a body double hmm. on um, Die Another Day, right? So when, so. I, you know, I'm not meant to be on set the whole time. I'm meant to relax when they're setting up the light. You know, they put somebody that's the same height in there, you know, wearing a similar dress so they so they can light it properly. So when I saw I had a double buddy double, I was like, no, please. I want to be on this set for as long as possible. This is my once in a lifetime opportunity yes. to be in a James Bond movie. Please do not keep me in my room. <laughs> so they're like, okay. <laughs> So yeah, but and then Pierce Brosnan has this awesome body double. Oh, we recently became friends. Oh no, we didn't become friends recently. It was maybe a few years ago on Facebook. I'm friends with him on Facebook. I forget his name. Oh, but he is so cool. He's Pierce Brosnan's body double. He's done a lot of his. Do you, do you know him? Um, no, not offhand. Well, he would be a great person for you to interview. Sure. He's worked on so on all of Pierce Brosnan's um, Bond movies. Oh my god. He gosh. knows everything. He's seen everything. He's got tons of pictures with Pierce Brosnan, and I think he does Pierce Brosnan personation. I think impersonation. Oh wow! So he looks the part then. He's great. He's great, and he was such a jolly person. Now the reason why I had to work with him a lot is they needed his hand to do the hand scene of grabbing, grabbing the thing, right? Yeah. The hand between my legs, but Pierce wanted to do it, so. <laughs> You think? So I actually got Pierce Brosnan doing it a lot also. So it was really funny. So then we had the director doing it and then we had Pierce Brosnan doing it. And then the hand double man was doing it. <laughs> it was just, so that it was day so you, you had three men grabbing your thigh. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And it was funny because it was, you know, it's all very professional. It, you know, course, and if you were yeah. to explain it to people, they think, oh, this is so weird. So slimy. So, it's not. OK, it wasn't. Yeah. There's loads of people around. Um, there's so many people around, makeup artists touch me up. Anyway, um, to cut a long story short, it's funny because there's, there was two parts to it. They had to get, the hardest bit was to get the hand. And I think this is, I think Pierce did this, looking like, so the idea is that the, the Pierce doesn't know that there's a gun there. Well, the audience is not meant to really think there's a gun there. It's supposed to look suggestive and it's supposed to look like Pierce is trying to get under her skirt for other reasons, right? Mm -hmm. sure. So the hand going down, that shot, there's a clip where the hand is going down like under the skirt. It has to look it has to look like, ooh, he's getting groovy with her. So I remember we had to do that clip. And just to do like that clip alone took like some time because the feeling behind it had to be right. And I remember this, my... I had these hands like doing this and the camera was down there. So that was really interesting. So once that bit was out of the way, then we did the lifting of the skirt and the grabbing of the gun. Does that make sense? It does, it does sound yes. a little weird and like no. creepy, but it's not, it's no. not, it really isn't. And I know with all that me too, me too movement and what have you, it's so easy for that to be taken the wrong way, but it's not, it's very, very professional. So, and it's just lifting of the skirt. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I don't think people realize the different angles and the amount of yeah. work that's involved to do just a few seconds of film, really. So the acting with the hand alone, does it make sense that he, we're supposed to understand that there's, we don't know there's a gun there. We think he's interested in, you know, getting yeah. groovy with her. There's a bed in front of him. The hand, his hand is about to go under her skirt. Yeah. So that little lift, if you look back at the scene, there's a lifting of the skirt. It's meant to look like, oh, he's going to be groovy with her any minute now. But then boom, boom. And that's why it's such a, I mean, I'm going to say it, it's such a badass Bond scene because it's Bond being badass. Like he's nibbling on your ear at first and you think, well, oh, so is he trying to get with another? Yeah. Well, kissing, nibbling, but, but then all that's of a sudden. In the script, by the way. That was oh. not written in the script. Not that that matters because you go with the flow. But I remember when he first nibbled on my ear, and I think it's the it's the take that they use. You will see in my face that is a natural reaction 
I did not know he was doing that. Um, and that's that's great because that's just what happened in the scene. That's what Pierce did. Perfect. That's how I reacted. I can see it because I remember thinking, oh, I didn't expect that. But the character herself, she doesn't expect that either. But I remember straight afterwards, the makeup artist comes up to me and she, you know, in between takes, after that take, and that didn't happen in rehearsal, which is fine, you know? Sure. Um, who's to know what could have happened? He might have just thrown me on the bed or something like that. Um, the makeup artist comes up to me and goes, oh my gosh, I can't believe um, that happened just then. Are you okay with it? I said, sure, that's fine, That wh whatever. I know, <laughs> but I remember that. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's part of, I mean, what you do and what Brosnan does is art. And so if an artist decides to, yeah. you know, interpret a scene, I think that's the wonderful outcomes. I think it was, I think it was lovely. I think it was lovely. Yeah. And, um, you know, Pierce is, I can just say Pierce Brosnan is so nice. Um, I remember somebody saying to me, oh, but everybody, most men are always going to be nice to you. Um, I've had that mm. said to me quite a lot, but I'll tell you a story later. And I do know he's very nice because I've met, I know a few people that have met him. I've got some great anecdotes about Pierce Brosnan. Oh, Love yes. It. Love it. Yeah. No, and I've you. heard, I've Pleasure. heard such amazing. amazing things about him. He really he is, is nice. a very special person. He took time to talk to me. Oh, and I've said that to people, like, oh, of course, he's going to take time to talk to you. No, he did take time to talk to me. Um, I remembered he played backgammon um, oh. in between takes. I don't know, maybe it's a way for him to focus. So there was someone that was actually designated to play with him on the set. Um, but I remember looking at it. And I, at the time, I remember I didn't know how to play backgammon. And I said, oh, I don't actually know how to play this. Um, but he took time to talk to me. Um, he was extremely... He flattered me. He was very nice. He told me, um, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say, he told me I was very beautiful, which is very nice for a man to say, because it's very open. He's not trying to hide anything. He, he, he was very nice about, he was very nice with me. Um, he asked me where I got my good looks from, and he guessed it was from the Philippines for some reason. I think wow. he might have had a Filipino nanny at, at one time, I think he told me. I think, I think he, I, and we talked so much that I think that's what he said or somebody he knew had a Filipino nanny and another thing he told me was oh yes the first thing he said to me was oh Rachel I he said to me we were all watching the auditions of all these girls that um we, you know we had to do this last minute casting he said and then so we're watching these girls and we're going through all the girls for this role and then we're all sat in the room he said it was the green room um and we're just looking through all these and, and we're looking and then you come along and you do this incredible non chucker demo and he said you did great lines too that we just all looked at each other and just went okay that's the one we're gonna pick how can we not pick her as a bond girl so i just was like oh yes Pierce. i was really hoping that i would get noticed because of the nunchuckers and um so i was like and he also said and you know who knows maybe we'll they're always rewriting the script who knows if we'll get to see them in action at any point Ooh. so i do remember thinking oh are they gonna ever do add anything to the script are they you know but i was quite happy with the role that i did I know, so but I'm, it worked. I'm fascinated to actually dovetail from that because is there anything that was left on the cutting room floor that you filmed? So when you went to see the movie, were you like, oh no, they skipped that one line or that you moment find that we this had? Very, very, very funny. So my the first movie I ever did was a movie called Long Time Dead. And it was um starring um Lucas. Haas, is that his mm. name? He was the little boy in Witness, yeah, yeah. and he grew up to be another act, an actor. Yeah. And so I had a scene with him. I was so excited to be in the scene, right? So it was actually one of the first premieres I ever attended in Leicester Square. They invited me, and I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to be in this scene with the boy from Witness. <laughs> anyway, I ended up on the cutting room floor. They, they cut out like 20 minutes of the movie, and they changed the storyline. And I was not in the movie and I was invited to the premiere and I could not believe it. I was like, oh, so going back to your question, when I went to the James Bond um, premiere with my mother, I said to my mom, oh, mom, I don't even know if I'm in the film. I don't even know if I'm in the film. And I really didn't. I didn't know, like, because I wasn't really communicating with people as such. And actually, 
I had communicated with Lee Tamahori at the after party. I'm wrong. And he did say, oh, you did make the cut. And I just remember thinking, oh, OK, so I made the cut. Maybe it will just be a passing shot. So I told my mom, mom, it, I think it's just going to be like two seconds. You know, I know we were filming for three days, but three days could mean one second. But hey, I'm in the movie and I've got a credit. <laughs> so anyway, when it came to the scene, I actually couldn't believe it. They actually included everything. I remember that I had to walk from the door to the bed. Hmm. That was never written in the script. It was it said cut to the bed. And I remember Lee at the time going, let's make this a nice let's let's like elaborate with this scene. Let's have you walking along. We'll do a shot of you. Let's have you walking away. Where do you leave? They even included that. So I couldn't believe it. I was like, well, actually, I can be honest. I actually did not watch the scene. I was so nervous. I have this phobia of watching myself. There must be a word oh, for it. No. So when we're in the premiere, I said to my mom, oh my gosh, here it is. So I covered my eyes and I was like, I could hear my voice and I was going, oh, it, is it finished yet? Is it finished yet? And she was like, no, no, it's not, no, it's not. And then when it finished, she said, oh my gosh, she said, it was so much longer than you said it would be. Oh. So uh, I couldn't believe it. So I actually didn't watch the scene at the premiere. I actually had my head down. I was so nervous. I couldn't, I was so nervous that a, who knows, maybe I wasn't going to be in it. B, maybe I would just be awful or I would look weird or I don't know, you know. I suppose I was at that age when I was still maybe not completely comfortable with watching myself. Mm. I'm much better at it now, but it was so funny at the time. So no, they included everything. I can tell you, even what, I remember they made That's me great. walk all the way back to the door as I left. And I remember they even had a shot of that because I remember thinking, oh, They've got my bum in shot. I remember thinking that. <laughs> I remember thinking that. Nothing oh. wrong with that. Because <laughs> I'm not like a big fan of that. But anyway, I was like, okay. <laughs> but I remember thinking, oh my gosh, they included everything. And I can actually say that I've done, of all the roles that I've, I've ever done, I did a movie with, I did a movie called The Tournament with Robert Carlyle. I had, I actually was meant to play the lead, but the lead was Chinese. And in the end, they, they, they recast it. It was actually a Harvey Weinstein film. They actually recast it for um, Ke Kelly Hugh got to play the role, but they said I could be in the movie, but I had to dye my hair blonde, so I did. But I remember spending like a lot of time filming this scene and it's a great scene with Robert Carlyle. I'm you know in a car crash and then I'm screaming, trying to get out the car. But I remembered we did so many different angles with it. And in the end, it's still a great scene. It's, it's, it's really like squished into like as short as it can be. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great scene, but it was so much longer. And I remember thinking of all the movies that they show every single angle that we shot, yay, <laughs> it's the Bond movie. So that is a very long answer to your question. Well, okay. I, I, this is fantastic. And I, I, now I'm even more curious, when is the first time you actually see yourself on a screen? Did you go to multiple premieres and then eventually do you uncover your hands? I know that's so crazy, isn't it? Um, so the first time I had to redo my um, show reel, my demo reel, mm. and I had to add the Bond movie, right? So once it came out on DVD, I think it came out on DVD in those days. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, once it came out on DVD, I had to add it. So I had to watch it. That was the first time I watched it. No, so no, no, no. That was the first time you yeah, saw it. But it wouldn't have been that long after. It would have been. The following year yeah six to eight months like at least november. didn't it come out in like november or december or something mm -hmm. like that yeah so it would have been the following year yes when i added it i was like oh. and then i was like i remember looking at it going oh goodness why didn't you just watch it <laughs> i know and it was so complete it was amazing and i heard and i don't you probably have heard all these stories but i heard that uh, Brioni, Bollinger, even Norelco, who did the shaver that he's using, were not only fascinated, they were very involved in the contract of making sure that their products, because there was product placement in that shot. Yeah, there was uh, a lot of product placement. Yeah, they were very yeah. established and looking correct. The Bollinger had to look, yeah. you know, very inviting and delicious and things. Like that. Yeah, they make that look so nice. They like, yeah. between each take, they like clean it and spray it. It looks fresh. <laughs> no, everything is I can't tell you I get so much satisfaction from yeah. things being cleaned and polished on set I don't know there's just like oh 
it really is so nice working on a Bond movie. And the food was so good as well. Ooh. Food. I'm a what, big foodie. What, I love food. What'd you eat? <laughs> you know, I don't actually remember. And I wish, oh, I'm such a goody two shoe. I wish, mm. I remember bringing my camera and thinking, oh, I'm going to take pictures of like behind the scenes. And I remember asking and they said, no. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. such a goody two shoe that I didn't. I wish I'd taken pictures of everything, of the menu, <laughs> of me and Pierce behind the scenes, because I know if I'd asked him, he would have said yes. Of my room, of, you know, I had a voice coach because they wanted me to sound like I had a little bit of more of a clipped British accent, a bit more like the Queen. And if you notice, I do say, yeah, so I wanted to take a picture of him teaching me or some video. I wanted to do all these things, take a picture of my meal when it arrived, right. me arriving at Pinewood Studios with the 007 sign. And all. If I had today, I would do it. And everybody does it now anyway, because they all have their phones. Exactly. Um, but I was so good and I didn't, but maybe that's why I can remember it so well. Yeah, but you know something, <laughs> karma. I mean, I think that's why you're, you're so blessed. And, and if people don't realize, or not everybody realizes that you've gone on to so many incredible things. I mean, the, the Bond moment is a moment for you, but what did you feel like right after that was all over? Were you like, ah, oh, or were you like elated and energized? When you say when it was over, like after the so Bond movie was released. The premiere happens, you know, you, you have, you know, and it starts to, you know, maybe oh, six, eight brought, months later. I meant to, I brought it out. I should have brought my, I have a clippings book upstairs. In fact, I have three clippings book. Oh my gosh. Books. And if I, I would show you how much, I was in a national newspaper in England, nearly every, I'd say every other day, I have stashes and stashes of pictures attending events, premieres. It was crazy. Like people invited me to everywhere. <sighs> And I had paparazzi really interested in taking pictures for me. And I would pose for them when I arrived to, in places. Like, I, I couldn't believe that people wanted to take a picture of me and then they'd be in the papers. So, you know, I had to make real effort to like look good. And it was also a time when there were a lot of events. It's, it's, it doesn't happen so much anymore. Yeah. There were all these like over the top events with like champagne and gift bags and what have you. Like, for example, even the uh, Die Another Day premiere and the after party was insane. It was amazing. I, they probably still have amazing parties, but I remember back then going to so many parties in London that were just insane or events, charity events. I got invited to so many charity events. I was working for Cancer Research UK. I even got my mm. sisters involved. We did so many photo calls, um, uh, press calls. Uh, I remember doing TV interviews and they were it, it, all to raise awareness for cancer. Uh, we did that so many times. I'm, I'm still good friends with the former director of Cancer Research, Research UK, the, the person who used to book us on these events. Um, Sparks Children's Charity. They, um, they used to do a couple of events every year. And on one of them was, it was a golf tournament. I took part in that. I took part in so many charity events because everybody wants to have a Bond girl there so i was invited to a lot of things and you know i always said yes i always remember thinking always say yes if you can do it always say yes so i always said yes and i had opportunities to travel i got invited to the latous rock opening in mauritius they wanted a james bond um girl to attend and they said i could bring someone and i brought my mother oh. and i remember other people went there and they were like Oh, I wish I brought my mother and they brought their boyfriends. And I'm like, actually, oh, and now these people are no longer with their boyfriends. Exactly. <laughs> I brought my mother. Um, so many things I got invited to, amazing. So many gifts I got too, like <sighs> all sorts of things. What I mean, gifts, wow. I mean like so we kept going. Like mobile I mean, phones the, the, and things the like tours that. And everything, it just it kept elongating. I mean, it just yes. And one thing that I always kept at and um, kept going because I loved it so much and I could see the value behind it and how it really was good was the charitable stuff. Mm. I could see that if I was doing something um, to do involving involved with a charity and then they used the James Bond girl name, then it was very easy for them to help to get um, publicity yeah. and raise awareness. Um, and didn't you um, do a book called Making a Difference about yeah, all right. of these things? I, 
Yes, that's right. That was interesting how that came about. So, oh gosh, I'll try and cut a long story short. Oh gosh, what's um, what's his name again? Lazenby. Um, oh, George Lazenby. Yeah. George <laughs> I should have brought out my picture of him. I was very lucky one year. I think it was two thousand and might be two thousand and twelve. I think my booking agent because i do convention signings calls um gets a call going we've just had a james bond girl drop out and we're looking for a replacement it's rachel grant free to fly to australia attend a convention and q a with um, george lazenby and um so yeah i did that and at the time i had a friend who was interested in me writing a book about my charitable interests and he was based in new zealand hmm. So when he knew I was flying to Australia, they, the organization flew me to New Zealand and I was able to um, get the book published through his, yeah, through his contacts. That's so that's fantastic. how it happened. Yeah. Wow. How was, uh, how was your experience with George Lazenby? Oh my gosh. He is insane. He's like crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. He told me he, when he became, I, I mean, I don't want to like speak about people in a way that maybe they might not want. Me. No, I'm, I'm sure he tells these stories. Firstly, he, he tells he those did, stories. He does. Yeah, I'm sure he does. He because yeah. oh yeah, he was telling them on stage, and I was laughing all the time with him. He is crazy. He told me he is wild. He is nuts, and I think he really is. He told me when he was James Bond. I'm sure you know all these things. He could not believe he was James Bond, and he it went to his head like he would not believe he said he could walk on a plane and carry a gun he walked around with a loaded gun he said he was james bond he could do anything he wanted he could walk into an airport with a gun james bond they would let him through get on a plane james bond he said it was crazy he said one night he said he was he was walking down the street <laughs> he, had, he had one of his guns on him i don't know if you know this he told me this and he just was shooting at the, the lampposts. Am I supposed to say stuff like that? Do you know so that? He, he tells the story of how he was shooting in the air and shooting at <laughs> things and yeah. And they had a word with him. He told me yeah. that he was shooting at the lampposts and knocking out, knocking out the lights at night. And I'm like, that's yeah. crazy. That's wild. Of course, I'm Miss Goody Two Shoes. I'm like horrified. I'm like, he said, but you don't understand. I was James Bond. And when you're when you're that young, you have to understand and you're from Australia and he was a model and he'd never actually really worked like in such a big production and you're suddenly being thrown into the limelight like that what that does to you that's insane yeah he said he was he was having house parties and inviting so many people to them on the expense of the production mm -hmm. and he actually said mm, it might be one of the reasons why they didn't ask me back i was uh, a bit of a bit difficult but he was very open to talk about it and um Wow, George, that was George is George. We've we've had some dinners together, and he is exactly how you're describing. He's he's a true Australian uh, guy, and he is rough and tumble, and he tells it like it is, and that's who he is. He, he really did. He wasn't afraid to answer any question that was asked of him at the Q and A. Um, and yeah, oh gosh, that's crazy. It's What's insane. so weird? I have to tell you, this is really strange. This when I so when I first arrived at the hotel that I was staying at where we were gonna have the function with George Lazenby. Um, I met this guy in, um, I was with my booker and she actually shared a room with me because I wanted her to come with me. So she came with me and she shared a room with me in Australia. Her name is Holly Evans, she's a great girl. Anyway, when I was in the foyer, I, I go up to this guy and I go, oh, are you George Lazenby? And he says, yes, right? <laughs> And so Holly's going, oh, nice, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Anyway, he was a little bit drunk, I remember that. And I didn't think anything of that. So anyway, we invite him up to our room. And he comes into the room, he's very nice, he's well-dressed, quite a nice looking chap. Anyway, turns out, anyway, he stays for about half an hour, because um, I'm getting to know, and he's, he's doing the talk and everything. This person was not George Lazenby. And, up until this day, like Holly and I do not know who this person was, but we do laugh at it. Because when Please. we meet George Lazenby the following day, I'm like, oh, you, you don't actually look the same. <laughs> so this guy just said yes, and for the whole evening, he was impersonating he was, George Lazenby? Well, it was like, not for the whole evening. We actually invited him to the room. I wasn't by myself, I was with Holly, and Holly is a former major of Desert Storm. 
Oh, um, she so. was in the US military, so she's uh, she's somewhat tough, but she actually thinks I'm tougher than her. It's actually quite funny. So anyway, so we invited him to the room just quickly. I mean, he probably was in the room for 20 minutes, half an hour max, um, just as we arrived. And he was really nice and friendly. And he was like, yeah, how are you? How was we weren't even talking anything, James Bond. I don't know. The whole thing was weird. I think he was a little bit drunk. I'm not sure. That was so weird. Up until this day, we don't know who he, who he is, who he was. What? So oh my weird. gosh. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Seriously. But by the way, I've, yeah. I've got to ask, do you need to take a drink of water? No, I wanted to show you something, but ask oh, it please. first. Well, I was going to ask you something totally unrelated to Bond, just because I was fascinated with you doing the research. And by the way, I've seen, and people watching this can see you doing unbelievable martial arts, uh, the nunchucks that you were talking about, the bow staff, Joe staff, uh, Sai, you're doing Tomfa, you're doing all these things. And I've, I've been a martial artist all my life. Oh, really? And yeah, you know. What do you, what do you learn? What? Tung Sudo. So I've always done Tung Sudo, and, uh, but I still, I built a gym downstairs uh, specifically for my martial arts movement. In fact, next week, I think actually the week after your video, I'm doing a video on nunchucks. So, uh, and you know, I did the whole competition nunchuck thing and used to love it, but you're up there on YouTube with all this, but the thing that blew me away is you've got- Oh, I know what video you're talking about. Yeah, oh yeah. You've well, got you know, that's even not a great video. I'm so much better than that. That's an old video. Anyway. We're gonna have to redo <laughs> it. We'll, we'll redo it, we'll get that's together. That's fine, that's fine. Yeah. Yes. So, you there was there was a video out there which almost caused you to travel the world again which is you got four million views on a packing video how to organize and pack that's on youtube on facebook the video has i think it's got over 20 million views i've got one video with 24 million views the video was shared by oprah it was shared by Time Magazine, Good Housekeeping. It was basically shared by so many magazines. This video got me more publicity internationally than the Bond movie, I have to say. Although the headline that they used was, they used a Bond, they used Bond girl headline. And it's funny if you, I don't usually like to read through comments, but a couple of ladies, um, when like um, people wrote about, oh, look how a Bond girl packs, people were, some ladies were going, Oh, why does a Bond girl make it any better or something? Why, why does, why do you have to say she's a Bond girl? Why does that make it better? And I just remember thinking, oh, all right, never mind. But anyway, this video <laughs> got translated into like six different languages. It got translated into Mandarin, Cantonese. I had um, Taiwanese media call it, um, calling me, um, stations in China, Australia, although they speak the same language, Italy, some Italian major network um, translated it into Italian and it got shared in so many places. I could not believe it. It's funny because I actually produce um, uh, videos and commercials hmm. for various um, companies. I'm actually quite good at it. It's really strange. I think it might have something to do with all the commercials I've done in England and all the experience I have working you know, as an actor. So I actually produce quite a lot of online commercials. So I was producing commercials that day for a company called Biagi. It's luggage that folds. And then at the end of the day, I had this idea. I said to them, I have this idea where we don't make it look like a glossy um, commercial. I think what people need to see and what people relate to more, I said on social media, is when it looks real and when it's taken like you're just at home. So I said, let's just set up the camera. Um, leave me in this room. I changed to literally my house clothes. I like took out, took, I took off my glamorous like outfits that I'd been using that day in the commercial. And I just made it really look ordinary. I threw all the clothes on two beds hmm. and then I just went, hello. And I just did one take. I just went, I'm gonna pack everything that you see here into this little bag. And I just did it in one take. It took me about 15 minutes. And then I thought, let's speed it up. Let's release it. And let's see how the, it does as a commercial, but it doesn't look like a commercial. So people will stop and watch it. Absolutely. Within a week, the company, Biagi, my, my um, husband actually owns the company. That's, mm -hmm. how I, that's how I met him. I was booked on a casting about 10 years ago to, um, to promote the luggage on TV, which is, which is weird. Um, he, um, the, the company, which was struggling at the time, did a hundred grand in one week off the back 
of um, Facebook, um, of it being shared on Facebook and Instagram. And it's funny because the Daily Mail covered it. Good, as I said, good, good housekeeping, which is a huge magazine here. The Rachel Ray Show. Oh yeah, you. What I'm talking about? You live in the states. No, 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 absolutely. <laughs> the Rachel I... Ray Show shared it, and they invited me on. Um, they've invited me a few times on their show actually to share my packing tips. And um, it's funny because they always announce me as a Bond girl. It's that. That's what's so nice. I did other TV show appearances for that as well. I did local news in New York. I went on Hallmark's Home and Family show. I got flown to California. We were in the Universal studio set um, for um, Home and Family show. And mm. everybody always introduces me as a Bond girl. And you know what? I really do not mind. I think it's so nice. It gives me that extra angle that extra kind of leverage to yeah to do good things i think it's yeah. great so i love it and you know what i've really really made use of being a bond girl i've really really you know, i think if you have if you have something like that use it it's such a gift yeah it's such a gift to do good and like to do charitable efforts and to help raise awareness of all sorts of causes and travel the world and I think there's so much that can be done. I think it's it's such a gift and I've taken that gift and I've done so much with it. And I'm gonna to continue to do so much with it until like the day I die. I love this so. and you're a good hearted person. I mean, it, you even showed it during the casting of the whole thing moving through. It's, it's clearly you wanted to do good. What's well, the that? casting with that uh, Korean young girl oh, who yeah, you wanted to have the part me. all the way through. Oh, don't remember. It's fine. What no, I feel really bad you? about it. Like, off, I, because if that was me, I yeah. know how. Like, if that was just say, just say it was the other way around. Just say I'd auditioned first and got the Chinese role of Peaceful, and then they call me and go, "I'm so sorry that the scene's been changed to a Korean. They're looking for now for a Korean role." Yeah. I wouldn't have got that. You can't do the Korean British connection. You can do it with Hong Kong. Yeah, but you can't do it right. And I just was. That would have, I would have, oh my gosh, I would be devastated. I would, in those days, you know, you cry when you don't get roles that you're so close to getting. I'm sure she cried, I'm sure. Oh, maybe not. You know, I don't know, but I feel so bad and I, oh, I wish, I hope she, I hope she's fine about it. I hope she's but you did so many good things with the part post the actual role. That's what I'm saying is like, you've yeah. gone out and touched so many people and you've, you've created so much positivity. Uh, I did, just, I did. It's amazing. Yeah, I have done and it's really nice. So one of my greatest achievements in that kind of sphere of that world of charitable efforts is um, I built a typhoon shelter and um, which doubles up as a school during the day in a region of the Philippines, because I was born in the Philippines, where that gets you know a lot of typhoons. So it took a long time to raise the money. You know, it's so hard to to build something like that in a remote area. I can't tell you how difficult it is. And then you have to keep going back there. And then raising the funds is quite hard. You know, so sometimes people are very generous and you're able to do it. And then other times it's hard. And then, and then once they had a storm and then the road was blocked and then we couldn't pass through for like six months. Mm. And then it took about three years to build. It took such a long time. Anyway, it's now there and we built it. And the village actually is called, it's really interesting. It's called Fountains of Love. So I was like, oh, that's so weird. It's like peaceful fountains. Yeah. So I wanted to call the school peaceful fountains of desire school. I thought it'd be so nice. I, I thought let's call the school peaceful fountains of desire because without me being a Bond girl, the school wouldn't have happened. It really wouldn't have. So anyway, we get to the opening of the school and they didn't call it peaceful fountains of desire. I don't think they could understand. The sign just read Rachel Grant School. And I just was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> A little different. <laughs> I know, but I don't. That's what it said. Um, but oh. anyway, I don't. I don't really think it's called that today. At least I hope not. Um, I know it's not. I know it doesn't have a sign there. But um, oh, I should have shared with you some pictures of. Oh, I would have shared with you some pictures of how it looked. Is that weird for me to do? No. If it's online, I can insert it into the video. Oh yes, please. I know I can send them to you. Oh, because, perfect. Oh yeah. Oh, anyway, oh, I can't really find them so quickly. Um, Take your time. We'll, oh, yeah. we'll put them in. Oh, so I love animals. So what I did at the school was 
we painted oh let me see if i can make it brighter Aha. oh please excuse me are you chopping up this interview i don't know i kind of like this oh, it's no. like so real it's so no. human wait what am i looking you're, for? you're like an actual person i am a person here look at this see oh look it's weird it's see reflections oh, oh no, no it's like got it. a rainbow yeah. thing on it oh why has it got that rainbow you're signing a wall you know what we'll get these pictures afterwards from yes you. and then the school it means it means a little and these are all the children Ooh, there's a lot of kids oh yeah it's lovely oh they oh they they really love me those children i oh. really love them you know i just had a, i just had a little girl and you know i'm in my 40s and i wasn't sure if i would be able to have a little girl or not but i remember thinking i have i have a pretty good attitude but i remember thinking I will always adopt and so many children that don't have there's some of these you know so there's so many children out there that mm. don't have parents and it's such a beautiful thing to do but anyway yeah i will send you the pictures um anyway moving on i wanted to show you this yes this is very interesting i've got an interesting story behind this da, 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 da. it's going to show rainbow things oh look it shows all the reflections of my lights and everything <laughs> oh, can you oh see this? i do is it to front or do you see it the right way around no i see it perfectly yeah so pierce frosman tell me about this this is the only this is like the only oh no do i have i have maybe another signed photo from and oh i do have a couple of signed photos from actors but this is this is one that i have framed and look i love it oh my gosh that's so personal what's too. interesting about it to rachel die pierce another day this it's was like tomorrow first, never dies. This is the first James Bond movie I ever auditioned for. And at the time, um, yeah, no, it's tomorrow never dies. Oh. Isn't that weird? So it's pre die another day. So I have a really interesting story. So as I said, I auditioned for that movie and I have an agent. It was Oriental casting. And I had a friend in England who heard that they were doing castings for um the new james bond movie for e extras and he's a bond um he's a bond fan he's chinese he's british but he's chinese mm. looks he looks chinese so he said to me oh are you able to get me on the james bond movie and i said uh not really but i can introduce you to an agent that might be able to put you forward so i did and he got to work on the movie and he worked on it for like six weeks oh, and gosh. he was he was thrilled. He couldn't believe it. He was hanging out with Pierce Brosnan and everyone. You know, you know that scene with Michelle Yeoh with the um, motorbike? And he said it was fantastic to watch how they filmed that. He was so grateful to me that he, um, at the end of one of the days when he mm -hmm. was working on Tomorrow Never Dies, he wanted to get a signed poster of Tomorrow Never Dies because they released, they released that while he was working on the movie um so he got a couple of these posters he got one signed for himself and he got one signed for me but how was he going to get it he told me he knocked on pierce brosnan's winnebago i was like oh my gosh i can't believe you did that that's what he did i said you have because he's not a professional extra right? right he doesn't know that you're not meant to do that you know that right yeah 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 no that's no good he knocked on pierce brosnan's winnebago right Pierce answered, he told, he told me, I said, well, how on earth did you get this? He said, oh, I knocked on Pierce Brosnan's Winnebago. I was like, oh my gosh, how did you do that? Why? He said, no, it was fine. I was like, okay. He said, Pierce was said, oh, hello. He went, come in. He invited him into his Winnebago. He sat there with his wife who just had a baby. Who had a, he said he had a baby with him. Oh my gosh. And he chatted to Pierce Brosnan, no joke, for about 10 minutes. Pierce Brosnan, the guy said to him that, oh, by the way, this is a girl I really like, and it's her birthday today. Oh, it's my birthday. He gave it to me for my birthday. And she helped me get on this movie. And I would really like it if you could sign this for me. That's why he put a heart there. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that weird? That's insane. Yeah, no, so that's it. So that's how I got that, because this extra that I helped get on Tomorrow Never Dies decided to knock on Pierce Brosnan's Winnebago. <laughs> Anyway, afterwards, he was told that you really should not do that. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, well, yeah but but Ali, that just goes to show how nice Piers Brosnan is. Absolutely. Right? Oh he was gosh. willing to invite somebody in that he didn't know. Well, obviously, and then sit with him. His wife was there. That was like family time with his baby. Oh, my gosh. I know. Oh, 
But it was meant to be. It was meant to be. I know. Anyway, I'm just thinking what else I can show you. I've got this thing here. I'll show you. So I've, oh no, I'm, it's going to see the weird reflection of the rainbow again. Wait, here we go. Can you see this? I can. I went to Jamaica. Oh, the James Bond beach. Yes. Yeah, I, I've done quite a bit of travel writing. This is Travel Life. It's mm -hmm. like a really good Asian travel publication. So I've actually stayed at GoldenEye in Jamaica and it is amazing. It is so nice. I, they treated me so well there being a Bond girl. Oh, yes. I got to stay there for free. Don't tell anybody. No, but um, but in return, I did like tons of travel writing and work my of course, right? But, I, I just um, came from there just um, literally a month ago and stayed there as did well. You? Did you I stay did in a, his house? Uh, no, I didn't stay at his house. I stayed in one of the uh, the beach huts. It's but... it quite expensive to stay in the house, but I would recommend like because I did ask, I did ask the lady there like, oh, it is quite expensive. But he said she said what they do is they get like. A lot of guys that like they might have like a, a stag night there or they ch get a chip in together and it really makes it worth it but did they did you go inside the house no i didn't go inside the ian fleming house because there was no. somebody already staying there but if oh, you stay at you, if you go to his you get to sit at his desk i know did you Isn't do that, that? Cool? you get to sit at his desk and you get to sit his piano is there they keep everything so nice look his piano is there oh yeah it's absolutely so nice. beautiful Oh, it's really nice. They keep it so nice. I have a terrible. Oh, and then, oh my gosh. And then they gave me, I got a tour with this guy. Do you know who that is? No. This is somebody, I think he still lives there. He is a great, great grandfather, he told me. His name is Ramsey. He's still alive. He was oh. Ian Fleming's, Ian Fleming's houseboy that's the word he used yes i think it was ian fleming's houseboy when he was 16 17. so he has loads of stories he you don't call him ian fleming or mr fleming you call him commander 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 do you know that did you know that yeah he was very much a colonialist and kind of keeping it pure so he always said we always have to call him commander commander Fle i said did you mind he said no 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 so we always so i would when we he was telling so i spent a day with him and we went fishing and he was telling me oh i'm just reading if i and he was telling me how um oh so i started calling calling ian fleming oh what did commander say and what this and what's that um but i remember a few things he said he said that ian fleming would sunbathe naked quite a lot <laughs> Why not? On his private beach. And um, Ramsey would say, oh, we used to watch him because I'd be swimming. And I, there's Commander, he's naked again oh on the God. beach and he'd be waving. <laughs> Wait, this is all coming full circle because you, I remember you saying when we were chatting before yes. that your father actually made a discovery about Ian Fleming. Yes. He, my father lived. There's my father lives literally a stone's throw away from where Ian Fleming is buried. So um, when I go and visit my father, we always visit Ian Fleming's grave. Look, here it is. Da, 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 da. Oh, it's got oh, that rainbow yeah. thing on it. Now, interesting, what's the name of the church that he's buried at? That's a good know. question. I don't have, a, have a great guess. Have a great guess. Well, it's named after a saint. Have a great guess. St. George's? No, no, no. Think, think of the obvious. <laughs> it's not St. Fleming or anything along those lines. Oh, uh, no, no. you can get it. You can get it. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm floored. I don't know. St. James. Oh, you're joking. No, it's not. St. James, yes. Oh, my gosh. It was almost too obvious. Well, we don't, I know it's too obvious, St. George. <laughs> St. Fleming, there isn't a St. Fleming. So it's named, the church is St. James. So, and the place is called Seven Hampton. Mm. It's, he's buried in Seven Hampton. Now, um, Ian Fleming is very, um, wanted to be buried there for various reasons. He, he used to live there, right? He was raised there or something. So, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is true. Do you know why 007 is called 007? Why, why seven? Why seven in particular? I thought it was just an arbitrary number. 
So I believe it might have something to do with Seven Hampton. Oh. And do you know why it's James? It's because the bird book, right? Yes. Yeah, that's the James okay, Bond book. Okay, but somebody book. also said there was also a connection because the church in Seven Hampton mm. is St. James's church. So he's very, his family, apparently they're quite, they're linked to this place. So I, I, that I don't know, but even in his death, there are clues to find him. Seven Hampton, like 007, St. James's church. And I then somebody it. took it. Someone took that piece. Well, that's it. Didn't your father discover yeah, so they was missing? Oh my gosh. I asked my father today. I said, dad, I'm having a, an interview. Um, if it comes up, is it true? I recall you said that you discovered that the gravestone had been vandalized. So he didn't respond to me because he didn't see the message yet. But from what I recall, my father did discover it. Wow. This is what he said, whether or not he called the police, I don't know, or he, whether somebody else discovered it before him, I don't know either. But right. I remember he went to it and saw, oh, and it was the day itself. Oh. that it happened so whether he was the first person to, to discover it i don't know but i know he did discover it on the day it happened how's that so i am i'm not 100 sure if he was the one who called 999 um which is the police well, what a terrible I vandalism of of it's what a terrible desecration know, right oh Awful. it was they were very disappointed yes yeah, uh, yeah oh. very. but they're looking to get it redone obviously um Yes, that and they you took George what? Lazenby's uh, lamppost. So there's Bond mit things missing everywhere. Yeah, there are. That's terrible. It's terrible. Vandalism is terrible. I really cannot stand it. Oh, yeah. oh yes. All right, anyway. I, have, I have officially monopolized so much of your time, but I do have one last question. It's a yeah. Bond question because 2002, you make your Bond girl debut and you've been doing amazing amazing things ever since you have not stopped but do you stop to watch the new bond films like with daniel craig and how do you like them do you like them oh yes that's right you know i have to admit i haven't seen the last movie and i'm kicking myself over it because people ask me do i like you know do, do i like daniel craig and do i like the last bond movie? I, no i it's something i need to do it and it's just in general that i'm not stopping to watch movies as much as I used to. I think it's just like a time um, constraint. And there was also a time when I used to go to the movie theater all the time. Also like it's a pandemic, what happened? What happened to the world, right? <sighs> I used to go to the movie theaters like twice a week sometimes. And now, and these days and these years, I don't, but I do like, I do like Daniel Craig, mm. but I was when he was first cast, I was like, Oh my gosh, from Piers Brosnan to Daniel Craig, that's like such a big change. But then you get so used to somebody and then, exactly. and then he, it becomes so, he becomes so likable. And then you watch the movie and you realize, oh, it is James Bond and, and it works and it's, it's something different. And yes, they have to try different things and it's still a fantastic movie. Yeah. I mean, they make the Bond movie so well. So, and he, he, He's pretty good. Yeah, he's a great actor and he's great with the way they edit these fight scenes. I mean, he's either fantastic at fighting or they just edit it so well, but they make him look so good. He's so great. Yes, but I must now you've reminded me, I must watch. Um, I must watch the new Bond movie that's coming so out. So I'll tell you what I'll really do. really want to. Yeah, I will arrange a viewing and you and your husband can come and maybe meet some other people and we'll Ooh. have a Spectre viewing. What do you think? That sounds very it's, exciting. We we live so close to each other. It's a stone I know. Throw, so it's not a hardship traveling. Oh, that's very nice. We'll talk about it all fair. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, very nice. But Rachel, thank you. Thank you so oh, much. No, this has been so much. a wonderful yeah. way to spend the afternoon. And yeah, I cannot no, I'm thank like, you I, enough. I showed you everything I was meant to show you. <laughs> well, if you find something in your closet later, we can always do a part two. I'm sure there'll be a want for that. Uh um, yeah, I'm sure I'll remember so many things. I have so many other things to remember, but it's so nice to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you. What time is it? <gasps> Ooh, we've been talking a long time. But it's just like old friends. We've just been I going did have a really years. great anecdote that I had to tell you and I forgot, but I know it's actually do a really good one. Please, no, 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 do it. <laughs> I have, I go to China quite a bit. Oh, this is hilarious. And I have a, a colleague, I haven't seen her for a while though. I had a, a work colleague in China that I used to deal with 
And when she found out I was in a James Bond film, she later told me, she said, Rachel, you'll never believe this. I actually slept next to Pierce Brosnan once. And I was like, what? That's how she told it to me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's Chinese, so she has a little bit of an accent. She said, yeah, I sleep next to um, James Bond. She went, I'm like, oh, like, like how? I thought she was gonna tell me a joke. She said, no, she said, I traveled business class from Hong Kong. It was either business class or first class from Hong Kong to New York. And it was a night flight and everybody's getting, she said, everybody's getting in, um, tucked inside um, in their chairs. And suddenly, you know, the, the, the door's about to close. And suddenly she said, she kept saying James Bond, James Bond walks on and he sits in the seat that's next to me. And she, she said it was like so weird because she said she loves Pierce Brosnan and the James Bond movies. And so, but she said it was the weirdest thing because they actually were like, she had to go down and she said the seats were quite close. It wasn't reversed. So when she went down like to sleep and she kept turning over, she said it was so weird because <laughs> it was James Bond sleeping next to me. I said, oh my gosh. Anyway, in the morning, she actually um, told Pierce Pierce um, Brosnan, um, I'm thinking it's very unusual for me to be um, sleeping. She, she actually said that unusual, I'm sleeping next to, he's Chinese, sleeping next to James Bond. And I think they took a picture together. And apparently he was so nice, friendly, and laughed at her comment. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love to hear that. That is such a great story. I know I didn't say it very well because I was, it's funny, I was rushed. I was thinking, oh no, I have to tell this story quickly. And so I said it so poorly. But when she says it in her Chinese accent, well, when she told it to me, it was brilliant. It was so funny. I love it. I love it. Oh my Oh my gosh and he's so good to the fans so that makes all the sense yeah in the he, he's so good to the fans yeah anyway and thank you for being so good to us and and putting up this beautiful setting and i'm sure we're going <laughs> to be talking setting from yeah, look, Ikea. don't let it fall on you <laughs> i know <laughs> rachel thank you so much no thank you nice to meet you and to finally speak to you absolutely this has been david zaritsky for the bond experience and we'll see you all real soon take care Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.